This is my indoor cycling smart trainer setup. As you can see, it is all in boxes and I've never used any of it before because it's brand new. So I had to do an enormous amount of research to figure out what to get. And I figured I would videotape this and show you each piece that I bought, explain why I chose what I chose, and maybe it'll help you figure out what you need for your indoor trainer setup. What I've chosen to use isn't what you need to choose to use. For indoor cycling, all you need is a, uh, a dumb trainer, which you can get used for like $150. And you need a bike, and you need a Wahoo speed Bluetooth sensor, and you're good to go. So anyhow, let's get into what I've got here. Let's start on the ground. This is a Wahoo Kicker mat. I chose this one because I liked what it looked like and I wanted to get a Wahoo trainer so it would match that. I want to protect my floors and these also cut down on vibration noise. Uh, noise is a very important thing to me because the room I'm in is right next to a room with two little kids who sleep in there. So I want to be as quiet as possible. This is the Kicker Core. I decided to get a Wahoo Kicker Core because number one, it is silent in operation. So again, quiet is good and into quiet. So there's other great choices out there. Uh, something about the Wahoo brand, I have to admit, kind of appeals to me. I like the design of their stuff. So to each his own, variety is good. I chose this one. You wanna be in that sweet spot in cycling where you know, you're getting something really good, but you're not paying a lot of money. There isn't diminishing returns for the amount of money you're spending. Like you're getting the good thing. And once you get the good thing, you can practice the old saying of buy once, cry once. And that's what I was going for here. The next order of business would be putting on a cassette. I've got this here. This is a Shimano CSR 7000. This is the exact same cassette that I have on my road bike. Let's talk about the road bike for a minute. This is a 2016 Defy Disc 1. Again, this is an area where I practiced buy once, cry once. So I spent a decent amount of money on this bike, but the whole point was to get a bike that would totally satisfy. I wouldn't feel this need to upgrade later. Like this is the bike still serving me great to this day. I gave this bike a good cleaning before I brought it inside the house. So I totally scrubbed it down, hot water, sudsy soap, did a full degreasing of the whole drivetrain. Did that a couple of times, and scrubbed it down, and we got it nice and clean to bring it indoors. Of course, I re-lubed the chain afterwards. I just want it to be nice and quiet, so that was the goal. And I want it to look nice. It's okay to look nice. Cycling, come on. We wear skin tight suits. Okay, so I've got the cassette kind of on there, but it's not on there very tight. I just, you know, have this, this little lock ring on the end here, just tightened with my fingers. But we want that on there really, really snugly so it doesn't fall off or something. So I have here some tools that will help me lock this thing on. The ones I bought are made by a company called Omers. There's a bunch of these out there. You can buy them from Park Tool. This is like 10 bucks. It had really good reviews. But anyhow, you need this to kind of lock on your thingy. I was able to do that fairly well just with my hands. You need a one inch wrench to do a lot of these, but I noticed with my Omers, I didn't have a wrench that big. This is my biggest wrench. And uh, there, theirs has a, kind of gets small enough right there. So you can get away with this with the crappy wrench like I own. Apparently, yeah, I bought the right one because that's happy. The chain whip 
is not very necessary. I wasn't able to get that on there with just my wrench and that locking nut. The chain whip is uh, much more useful if you're uh, taking a cassette off. That's when it becomes really useful. You know, you see how you can like get a grip. Right, so with uh, indoor cycling, you want to have an immersive experience. So some people will use like a full-blown computer hooked up to a monitor, to a TV, to run their cycling software. Other people will just use a smartphone and train with that. Others will use an iPad and run some kind of cycling training software on the iPad. Other people still will use a laptop and kind of prop that up in front of their trainer. Some people might just watch regular television. What I've opted to do was to get a television and put it on a stand. My laptop is a MacBook Pro 2013, 13 inch. Doesn't have a discrete graphics card, so I checked it out and the programs I was interested in trying out for indoor cycling, that computer just doesn't really cut it for a very smooth experience. It's kind of choppy graphically and I didn't want to spend all this money to have like kind of a choppy looking thing to look at as I was training. This just isn't any old tripod stand. I did a lot of research, figured out what people were using, and decided to get this one. If you're interested in buying any of this stuff, look in the description below. I've got links to everything there. There's also a blog post that heads to my blog, sammallory.com. There's a blog post here or there that has all of the information. Yeah, always read the instructions. I know people hate reading instructions, but come on guys and girls, look, we're putting together a TV stand here. You gotta pay attention to the thing. So there's my TV bracket. Gotta figure this out. I'm not gonna put this all on tape. So let me figure this out for a minute. Okay, at this point I have my Elitec Steel Portable Plasma LCD TV stand kind of set up. It's partially there. I still have to put the plate on the TV and get it properly affixed. This can handle up to a 46 inch television set. I got a 43 inch television to go on there, so I'm good. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, this is something that I can fold up, I can pick up, I can move it around. This is a TCL Roku TV. This model is the 43 inch 43S305. Now, let me just say something. This is an inexpensive LCD TV. I know there's like TV aficionados out there where this would disgust them. They need like the really good ones with the high specs and all that. I'm not one of those people. To me, this is like a super indulgence. I've only ever had a 32 inch television before, so. Yeah, let's go. Well, as you can see there, uh, the TV didn't work out so hot. Came out of the box, shattered. TCL, not happy. Amazon, <sighs> Amazon, well, I have to go through the ringer now to get this thing swapped out. So this isn't exactly how I envisioned this video going, as you can imagine. Okay, uh, about 10 days or two weeks or something like that has passed since the last clip. Um, wearing different clothes. Everything's different. Hair's probably a bit longer, but this, that's a replacement TV. Let's get to it. I'm going to be using this. This is an Apple TV 4K, 32 gigabyte. This is what I'm going to use to run the Zwift app. The TV behind me is not a 4K TV. You can run uh, Zwift on an older Apple TV, not a second generation, but I think a third generation. You don't have to have the 4K version. But the reason I spent a little more money for the 4K was that apparently the processor and the guts 
in the Apple TV 4K are a little bit better, so it renders the graphics a little bit smoother. So it's a better riding experience. So that's why I spent a little bit more on this. This is the 32 gigabyte version. There's also a 64 gigabyte version, I believe. Um, but from what I understand, 32 gigabytes is plenty. So this should be good to go. One thing to know, uh, the Apple TV 4K or just Apple TVs in general do not come with an HDMI cable. So you're gonna wanna have one of these to plug it in and get it going. One last thing, I'm also going to try Fullgaz, which is a competitor to Zwift. Fullgaz also has an Apple TV app. So this was a, a necessary purchase for me. Let's hook it up. Okay, as you can see, we're kind of in a better place now. Got the Apple TV is hooked up. Got Zwift running on there. I have the bike on the kicker core so that's good and finally get into a good place i just want to run you through a few more items that i got this is sort of the main body of the system but there's some other bits Let's start with this thing this is a quad lock bike mount it's going to go here and i'm going to mount my phone to it this is the run kit from quad lock I also run, but I've got a phone case there. Phone case clips into this thing, so it can live right there. The reason I want that is because, well, it keeps the phone close, but Zwift has a companion app that you can use to control what's going on and to communicate with other cyclists. And um, it's just nice to have it right there so you don't have to reach and grab anything, just boop, 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 boop. Sweat is an issue in indoor cycling, so to combat it, I've bought this sweat net from Blackburn, I believe. Yeah, Blackburn sweat net. This is going to live right here. Gonna connect there. Its main job is to keep sweat from going into the uh, that bit of the bike. It also just put a a towel right there, you don't need that thing, but it's like, eh, 10 bucks. This is my cadence sensor. It's also a speed sensor, two separate sensors. Speed I don't need for indoors. I'll be using that for cycling outside, but the cadence sensor is necessary if you have a Wahoo kicker. Uh, Wahoo does not record cadence with their trainer, so you gotta get one of these. I've got this thing that, let's not explain that yet. This is connected to this. This is a fan, right? So, sweat, right? I mentioned sweat before. The sweat net, you get hot in indoor cycling and you know, you wanna cool off. So, got the fan, it's a directional fan. And this is a little kit that um, you can use to control the fan. So. Got these thingamajiggies. Ugh, there's three. Um, so this plugs into the wall. Fan plugs into the, that. Remote control, boom, turns on the fan. So I have two fans. I'm gonna be controlling them with this. When you get hot, you wanna cool off. And once you cool off, you might like, hey, you know what? Let's chill out the fan for a minute and shut it off. All right, so that's kind of it. Uh, my indoor trainer setup is set up and ready to go. If you have any questions about this, or if you're curious about any of the gear I bought in the description below, I've got links to all of that so you can check it out. I have a link to a blog about this on my blog, sammallory.com. Check that out. I may, once I, tear down all this video equipment. I'm probably going to move the TV to the other side of the room and switch everything around. It looks a little close to me the way it is right now, but we'll get there. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you sometime. Maybe. That would be good. See you later.